We're going to take a look at scatter plots by going through one example. And what we're going to do with that example is to create a scatter plot, draw a line of fit, and then write and use a prediction equation. Now, what a scatter plot is, is going to be two variable data graphed on a coordinate plane. And because it's two variable data, these two pieces of data are going to be able to be paired up. So we'll be able to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, even though it might not technically be x and y. And then a line of fit is going to be a line that closely approximates the data. Right? So we're going to kind of estimate that line of fit. And uh, there is a way to find a line of best fit, uh, but that's going to involve using technology to help you out. So this is the example from a book where the table shows the percent of U.S. households with Internet access. And then the years go from 1997 up to 2007, and the percentages increase from 18% up to 61.7%. Now, since the year and the percent are related to each other, um, we can create an ordered pair out of them. Um, we have to be able to identify what the independent and the dependent variables are. Um, so that would be like our x and our y, where the independent variable has to come first. Now, when we think about independent and dependent variables, well, which of these two data points depends on the other one? Does the year depend on what percentage it is, or does the percentage depend on the year? And, well, time, years, is, is universal. It continues even before the Internet, after the Internet. It has nothing to do with the Internet. That means that our year, time, is going to be our independent variable, and the percentage is going to be our dependent variable, like the y coordinate. So that gives us an idea of how to label our axes. First of all, we have our year. Right? And so that we don't have to write 1997 and 2000 and so on. Uh, to make things a little bit nicer, we can say the years since 1995. Then we can use nice numbers like 2 and 5 and so on. So that is our independent variable our x-coordinate, so I'm going to put that along the x-axis. Then the other variable we have is our percent. Since that is our y-coordinate, I'm going to take the percent and put it on the y-axis. To make things nice and even, um, as we're laying out our years since 1995, we see that uh, our smallest year, 1997, would be year two. So I'm going to mark that as 2. And our biggest one, 2007, would be 12 years later. So we'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And that will get us out to that 2007. Now, um, we should probably identify that as being 12. Right? Uh, so that we can see our, our range of numbers. Uh, also, when we're looking at percentages, our percentage, smallest percentage is at 18 and our largest one is at 61. So if we did uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So here is 60% and down at the bottom is our 10%. Now we just need to plot all of our points. Right? First of all, we have uh, 1997 and 18. So that was year two. And 18 would be just below the 20 mark. So something like here. There's 20%. So 18 would be just below that. In 2000, that would be year 5. So we have 2, 4, and 6. Year 5 is going to be halfway in between 4 and 6. And we need 41.5%. So here's 30. Here's 40. 41 and a half would be just above that. Then in 2001, we're up to 50.4%. 2001 would be six years after, so we're up to 50% at year six, which is about right here. Uh, in 2003, that's eight years after 1995, so we're at year eight. We're up to 54%, so about halfway in between 50 and 60. And then, like we said, 2007 was at year 12 after 1995. And then we're up to 61.7%. Now, when we look at our five data points, 
it looks pretty linear, but not exactly linear. And that's why we want to be able to draw a line of fit. Now, a line of fit is going to be a line that kind of runs through the middle of all of our data. Right? And it really is an estimate when you're doing it by hand. And how you want to do it is to identify a couple of points where our line would go through these points, these two points, maybe um, these two points right here. We can kind of think of that as the line that runs through our middle. We have mo a couple of points that are above the line. We have one point that's below the line. And it's really a kind of an estimate of a line that goes through the middle of the data. And that would be called your line of fit. Next would be to write the prediction equation, which is really just the equation of that line. So this is why we wanted that line to go through two specific points so that we could have points to write an equation from. Now remember this first point was year two, and then the percentage was 18. The second to last point, that was from 2003, that would be year eight, which was at 54.7%. So let's write the equation of our line. Since we have these two points, we're going to first need our slope, which uh, is going to be 54.7 minus the 18 divided by 8 minus 2. When we simplify those two, we'll have 36.7 divided by 6, which is about equal to 6.117. We're just trying to write a linear equation, so we can use any form we want. I have two points and a slope, so why don't I use point-slope form? Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to use my point from 218, and of course the slope that we just had, and go y minus the y-coordinate is equal to slope. 6.117 times x minus the x-coordinate, 2. Okay. Now, of course, we didn't use x and y as our variables. Instead, we used t and p, where the percent p was our like our y-coordinate. So we have p minus 18 is equal to 6.117 time minus 2. Okay. And uh, just to clean up a little bit, I'm going to add 18 to both sides. Not going to clean it up too much. So we have time minus 2 plus 18. Right? And this would actually be a good prediction equation. So now we can use our prediction equation uh, to estimate the percentage of households with Internet access in 2009. So we have our prediction equation as being P equals... 6.117 times time minus 2 plus 18. And if we want to uh, predict that percentage in 2009, remember that our time is a time since 1995. So start off by taking 2009 and subtracting 1995. That would give you 14 years. So our prediction equation would be 6.117 times 14 minus 2 plus 18. Okay. With all that calculating, you do it by hand. You can do it in a graph and calculator, however you want to do it. But you should end up with an answer of 91.404. Okay. And of course, to answer the question, uh, it's not 91.404. It's 91.404%. So make sure that you include units with your answer. And there we go.